as Daniel Kahneman told, we have system one and system two, right? Two operational modes of thinking. Actually, research, recent research showed us, well, it's not that recent, but like 10 years ago, we discovered there's something else, a third operational system that is called the default mode network. It's when we're not in system one and we're not in system two. Actually, it's the part where when we're daydreaming, you know, we're drifting away with our thoughts. Interestingly, the new research came out in January showing that when you're in that default mode network, just, you know, you're somewhere else watching outside. You're not even aware. You're not actively thinking about something. You're just zoning out. Well, your brain at that moment is as active, is using as much energy as when you are in the system two, the active thinking part. Actually, and that is linked to the fact that when we sleep, yes, people, when we sleep, our brain at some times is more active than when we're awake. There are these moments uh, during REM sleep where our brain is as active as when we are in system two as well. And the default mode network as, is, is closely uh, connected to that, uh, to that REM sleep as well. Um, so that's a part when we are, uh, when we have dreams, etc. It's the brain is reorganizing itself every single night. But again, that would lead me way too far if I start talking about that one. Um, so the the default mode network is a third way of thinking that has been uh, under uh, undervalued. And and when we're talking about focus, you think one thing is multitasking. Don't go there. The other thing is don't work ten hours straight. Don't do that. Whenever we stop our brain actually never stops and it will continue behind the curtains, if you will, uh, will continue to work and rework the information you gathered and continue to, to, to try to solve problems to, um, to, and, and help you, even though you're not actively in system two thinking about the whatever problem you have, uh, you were focusing on just before. So the, the regular stops and even phasing out and looking outside the window and not thinking about anything like uh, very constructive or, 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 uh, or productive, actually you are, but you're just not aware of it. Those stops, those regular stops during the day are vital to be able to replenish some mental energy, but also to help your brain solve problems and become more conscious. Why? Because when we are in this default mode network, just as this is just the same as when we're asleep or when we go into flow, as, as uh, Declan was already uh, referring to mentioning before, those are moments when we're in an altered state of consciousness. This altered state of consciousness helps us, helps us reach out and find resources that, we're, that we can't consciously, actively go and, and use. It just opens up windows in our non-conscious brain and it helps us find resources that we otherwise we would not have access to. Who here has uh, heard about Csikszent Mihaly? Mihail Csikszent Mihaly? He's the father of flow. Uh, he actually died a couple of months ago. Uh, I was really sad when I heard about that. Um, so in the 70s, he's, he's like the godfather of uh, flow. He's the one who came with the, the, the term. And uh, basically what he's saying is, uh, there is this Goldilocks zone between challenges and skills. When, uh, when, when you have too much scaling, uh, challenge and not enough skill, you end up with anxiety. When you have too much skill and not enough challenge, you end up bored. Right? That was exactly what we were talking about before as well. So, and here, with the right mix of challenge and skill, you get into this flow channel, the flow. It started with this, but it got way more. Uh, he, he went into way more uh, detail after that with yeah, all these different kind of states, with, from apathy to uh, relaxation over anxiety, arousal control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What for us is really important or interesting here is flow and how how um, how do we get into that flow state? It's it's a very particular state, as I said, a state of consciousness. Um, Basically, it all starts with focus. You have to be focused on a task. You need, that's the, 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 the starting point, focus on one thing. Then you need to have a clarity of goals and immediate feedback. It's important that you know that you're on the right track. You get that immediate feedback and you're able to, to know that you're doing right. Um, so, so, for example, when you're, you're running like uh, Declan or, or cycling, like Declan was doing, 
your feedback is that you're going forward, right? A stupid, it's those little things. When you're writing, I, I write in Flow all the time. I use Flow for work all the time. When you're writing, writing is a perfect uh, activity for, uh, for getting into Flow because you, uh, you, you type repetitively and you, see, you can just see that text growing and growing and, and you go forward. So you get that immediate feedback. So it, it's not like uh, with, um, with grit and perseverance, which is actually closely linked to concepts of, um, uh, of delayed gratification, where I do something now, and 20 years later, I will see the rewards, right? Um, here, no, you need immediate feedback to be able to get into flow. Transformation of time is typical about, uh, about flow. You s time can shrink. Suddenly, an hour seems to last five minutes. Or on the contrary, five minutes seem to last an hour. I got once in a really bad car accident, and um, I still got this car. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, but it's, it, it was so weird. I can still remember those, those like probably 37 seconds that my car flipped over. I remembered them with such clarity, it felt like it was like, I don't know, endless time. And every single second of it, I, I, I remember seeing the, 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 the highway just next to me, like going like this, because my car was actually, yeah, anyway. So transformation of time, it slows down or it, uh, or it gets way faster. Um, intrinsically rewarding is vital. Intrinsically rewarding, you have to love your stuff. If you hate what you're doing, you will never get into flow. It, it, the, the activity itself uh, has to be intrinsically rewarding. You have to love it to be able to go the extra mile, to, over, to, to, to get above yourself, basically. Effortless and ease, once you are into flow, it feels like yeah, it flows. The, it, it all becomes so easy. It's... it's, it's yeah, effortless. And you need to have a balance between challenge and skills, as we just saw before. Actions and awareness merge. This means that basically you, start, you stop having this self-rumination where you repeat things endlessly and you talk to yourself in your head and you're just busy with yourself. No, that just, it's, it gets silenced. And it's just a great place to be. And a feeling of control. You are the one having an impact on what's doing. It's not somebody else. It's not something that is happening to you. You are in control. You're the one triggering this. You're the one doing this. So flow has not been that much studied. It's, it's difficult to trigger, and it's difficult to get people under a brain scan and say, OK, get into flow. It just doesn't happen like that, right? However, now with the portable uh, devices, it, it, it gets easier, but still, uh, it's not optimal. However, through... Uh, um, some recent breakthroughs have helped us understand through our own research at the Brain Academy as well. We helped understand that we have four types of flow, actually, based on the neurochemicals active at that moment. The first one is based on oxytocin. Now, oxytocin, I don't know if you know that one. Oxytocin is known as well as the trust hormone, the love hormone. It's basically what you get when you have a good conversation with someone, when you have um, when you spend time with loved ones, when, uh, well, when you get intimate as well, of course, but also a good, yeah, just spending time with friends uh, will, will have you f have uh, oxytocin flow. And the oxytocin flow is exactly that. Ever had a situation where you, where, where, where you ended up talking with someone and you felt like you, I known this person for my whole life, or, or just hours fly by and, and it is, you, you, it, it was just so great spending time together, you didn't realize it's, oh my God, it's already, it's already 3 a.m., right? No? Well, for those who had that experience, this is oxytocin flow. Second one is adrenaline. Adrenaline is danger, the danger junkies, the guys who jump out of airplanes and then end up doing things. You go like, oh my God, I hope he's not gonna die or break his neck or whatever. That is the adrenaline flow. Um, it's everything you see on the um, Red Bull challenges, uh, MTV, whatever. Uh, yeah, those guys, they're adrenaline. They say adrenaline junkies. Actually, it's, they get into the flow state. The moment they jump, it's, they're gone. Endorphin. Declan, that's for you. you endorphins are, the, um, the, endorphins are the, the, the chemicals that will help you. They're basically painkillers. So when you do sports for, uh, during uh, an extensive amount of time, uh, you start releasing endorphins just to kill the pain because it just, it just hurts. 
Uh, don't believe people who say that sports is all good for you. No, I'm kidding, kidding. It's really good for you. It's actually very good for your brain as well. Um, but up to a certain limit, when you go too far, you start. Uh, you you might do some damage to your body if you do it extensively for uh, for, for too long. Anyway, the, the endorphin. The, the famous runner's high that you experienced is this. It's the endorphin flow. The, the runner's high is when at a certain moment you, you hit a wall, and when you get through that wall, you get into your endorphin flow. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, is the dopamine flow. Actually, all four of them have dopamine because dopamine... Oh, I love dopamine. Dopamine is the bad boy of uh, neurochemicals. Bad boy because it's, it's basically sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You get it from t uh, taking uh, cocaine. You get it from uh, an, an, yeah, a night with a, with a loved one. And you get it uh, eating chocolate, basically. Uh, I come from Belgium, so we have a lot of uh, dopamine over there. Anyway, so dopamine is all the little things. Uh, each time you do something that succeeds, you get a little bit of dopamine in your brain. And... Um, Dopamine, is, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's also the base of all addictions, and that's why flow is very addictive. You might end up uh, getting really addicted to that feeling, and the adrenaline junkies have that, uh, or some of them at least. Um, so, but at the same time, dopamine is a bliss when, when it's under control. And dopamine is basically, it's what I said, it, um, one of the characteristics of flow is... Uh, it has to be autotelic, it has to be intrinsically motivating, you have to love what you're doing, because otherwise it won't work. Well, that's exactly because of the dopamine. Without the dopamine, if you don't love what you're doing, you won't get the dopamine uh, going, and without the dopamine, you will not get into flow. So, if you hate your job, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, you will never ever get into the flow experience of uh, working under in flow. Sharpen your mind.